Since 2014, the Kayala Foundation and the Ultimate Hawaiian Trail Run have been saving and changing the lives of the kids in Hawaii. And this year, street parking couldn't be more excited and honored to be sponsoring the 2021 Virtual Ultimate Hawaiian Trail Run. For the past seven years, we've had the opportunity to be a part of this incredible event. Not only is this event set in one of the most beautiful places in the world, but each year the funds raised go to helping the at-risk youth in Hawaii to have a safe place where they can be held accountable, know that they are loved for free. Last year, as everything was shut down during the pandemic, the event went virtual and brought the global community together so that these amazing kids didn't get left behind. This year, the in-person run is back, but the opportunity to participate virtually is available as well. At Street Parking, we stand behind the goals and values of this organization so much that we're proud to lead the way by doing what we do best, getting it done and supporting each other from home. Join us this year for the 2021 Virtual Ultimate Hawaiian Trail Run powered by Street Parking. Let's celebrate this beautiful cause together and get some fitness in while doing it. All right, here we are. We're back again for the Street Parking Coaches Roundtable. It's been a few weeks, three weeks, I think. Uh, we missed last week because we just have been, all of us, working tirelessly on this new logging system for the Street Parking members. We had some people in town specifically for that. And so uh, we apologize for the missed week. But here we are today, resilient. We're back. And we're talking about uh, resilience and mental toughness what those things are and how important they might be to your success in your health and fitness journey. Uh, Salvi, what episode number is this? 22? That sounds like a lot. That sounds like a lot. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is something I think that I see a lot on just social media in general, or that you hear people say, and it's not always about fitness related things. It can be about anything. Um, but we see it in our Facebook group of people asking like, Hey, how do I, um, get mentally stronger? Like, I feel like I just have a hard time pushing myself to do these workouts or to push, to keep going when I don't feel like working out, or I'm just not wired that way. Like this is just harder for me than it is for other people. And I think, um, it's a really important topic and um, something that has come up in the last like week or so over here, we were talking about it yesterday, about some you know childhood stuff and things like that. So I wanted to ask these guys today um, how they define both resilience and mental toughness and kind of like their experience with it and how we might be able to help other people view it maybe differently than they view it now. So to kick it off, I think defining what those terms mean. And instead of giving it one definition, which would be the, the best way to go, I'm going <laughs> to, we're each going to give our own definition. So let's start with, uh, let's confuse them even further and start with uh, resilience. So resilient, and I'll start resilience to me um, is just an ability to continue moving. Um, I think sometimes people think of it as a bounce back. Uh, in my experience and the way that I view resilience, that's not necessarily true for me. You don't have to go back to your original state in order to be resilient. If something bad happens or if you're injured or, or you go through a hard time, it's more of, um, an ability to keep moving. And I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, attitude toward whatever situation you're in. So for me, that's how I would define or speak about, uh, resilience. Jeb. Yeah. I mean, I think all of our definitions are going to be similar. Um, and I would agree with that. I think some of that, what you were saying kind of goes, starts to get a little into mental toughness for me. Um, I, I think that resilience is the ability to adapt. So whatever happens, you can adapt to that thing and then you can keep going. Um, I think technically, like, I don't know, in, in the scientific definition of the word resilience it is like has to do with elasticity where it's like something returns to its original form and that definitely is an example of resilience but i agree it doesn't necessarily um have to be that and i don't know that it should be because 
if you're just constantly returning to the same form, then you're not actually learning or progressing or, or growing. Yeah, kind of. I, I kind of had it like um, you're never pulled back and kept back or you're never completely stopped and stuck. It's whether you change course or slow down or something, but you're the ability to keep moving. So, um, Jules? Yeah, I mean, a merger, what you guys just said, being adaptable to continue moving um, in our day to day. And that comes with just time under fitness and being finding ways and you don't give the tips away yet we're gonna get there okay so then i'll stop, <laughs> then I'll stop there. just how you define it first yeah, yeah that's uh, it. alex do you have anything to add that's different than what we had to say yeah actually i'm so glad we did this because i feel like mine is um same but different i think um of resilience as just taking like full and complete responsibility for myself and ultimately not being a victim to my circumstances. Um, yeah. So I think, I mean, I think it all, all of it is encompassed in that. But when I think of resilience, that's what allows for me to bounce back or keep moving forward is kind of approaching everything with that mindset. And actually that takes me perfectly to how each of us defines mental toughness. Cause the way that you define resilience is more the way that I start to think about mental toughness. So when I was thinking about this earlier, I thought of mental toughness being like three parts for me. Number one is like a completely brutally honest level of self-awareness. Um, because I don't think that you can be tough if you're avoiding the re thing that you need to be tough about. Um, and then accountability. So, being aware of it and then being accountable for, so not just like, oh, I'm in this crappy situation, that's awareness for sure, but oh, what part of this crappy situation did I play a hand in and do I have control over? And then the third piece is resilience for me. Okay, like how am I gonna be able to continue moving? So for me, mental toughness are kind of like those three things put together. Jeb, how would you define mental toughness? So I think, um... <laughs> Mental toughness is, is I guess, choosing the, um, the strategy to be resilient that best serves you. Um, so it comes down to like your attitude. Um, so it's how are you going to adapt to these things and accept the reality of the things that you can, cannot control, the things you do um, have power over and don't have power over. And then what are the things that, what is the way that you can move forward that is going to um, give you the best um, attitude? And I, I read, and I don't know if I'm going to get this right, but basically if resilience is, is survival, like if you're resilient, then you can just keep surviving. Then uh, mental toughness is actually prospering. I like that. And I think there's actually like a huge misconception to um, or something that people want or expect to have happen where they think of people who are mentally tough. And I know I've thought this before. They think of people who are mentally tough and think, um, oh, like nothing ever gets to them. Like, and you, we could use a, a workout, for example, they, they see somebody who they, they don't seem to have that mental breakdown in a workout. And they assume that that person is never in their mind being like, oh my gosh, like I'm dying right now. And I don't think that's true. I think it's the ability to recognize, oh my gosh, I'm dying right now. And then what can I do about it? And let me keep going as opposed to letting it take over. And I think there is a big misconception for people who don't see themselves as mentally tough that I don't have the ability to be like, I'm fine no matter what. And and that's that's not a correct way to look at it, I don't think. What's your definition of mental toughness? Yeah, just being able to silence that inner voice on a regular basis with the attitude that you bring to the table. You know, full Silencio Bruno vibes from the new Pixar movie. Such exactly. a good movie. It's exactly what it is. You just got to, you know, uh, because in every workout, there's that voice that of uh, that's uncomfortable that's telling you to stop, stop, stop. But it's your attitude and you constantly overcoming that that builds that mental toughness. So, yeah. Like labor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alex? I don't know that I have a ton to add to that, but I, 
in a lot of ways, I think when I think of mental toughness, it's like I'm choosing the rational, logical part of my brain, like my prefrontal cortex versus that little voice that I feel like is more like often the lizard yeah. brain. Yeah. yeah. I think who does who says that? Seth um Godin? Lizard brain? Anyway, irrelevant. Um but yeah, like those little urges or like those really like animal instincts and silencing them, acknowledging them for what they are, but then choosing to do something differently, which is incredibly tough, which is why it requires mental toughness. Yeah, and just never letting the lizard completely take over mm -hmm. to where now you're just like spiraling. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, so funny, but I was thinking about when I was preparing for this, uh, one of the ways to even diagnose if you have mental toughness. I remember when I was first competing in CrossFit, there was an athlete um, who always won everything. And she was like, she would just come in, she was like super happy and bubbly and she would win. And I remember someone said to me one time, like, because I was a more of a very emotional person and if I had a bad workout or a bad event, I, um, it would really get to me and I would really struggle and I'd be like crying and stuff like that. And I was like, I'm just not mentally tough. Um, but then what I had noticed was when this person eventually had other athletes that started to be on her level, she wasn't super happy and bubbly and anything. The happiness and the bubbliness and the like, I'm just here to have fun, only worked for her when she was constantly winning. And so I just thought she was more mentally tough, but maybe it was that she hadn't yet been in a position. Um, so so don't ass you have to be in a position to be mentally tough to decide if you are type of thing and so anyway that was one thing that i was thinking about and then the other thing is when we were watching that um dj khaled wings thing oh my gosh and like i think that there's definitely like so julian watches this show called the hot ones and it's where they eat these like wings and each wing gets hotter and there was a dj khaled episode and he's just a ridiculous person i'm sorry <laughs> He's he's just a ridiculous person and whenever he would ask a question that was like a real like hey let me let me get to know you as a real human being and not this character um it was this fake level of confidence um almost on the side of delusional oh yeah um to where i think we see that a lot too where it's like no i'm fine like the like the like teenage boy like whatever you can't get to me and then he like go home and goes home and cries because his girlfriend broke up with him or something like that. That's also not mental toughness. That's like a that's like a fake confidence that I think people think of as mental toughness, which is not the same thing. Um, OK, next question. Do you think that mental toughness and or resilience are something that you are born with or a skill that can be developed or both? Jeb? Um. Well, first of all, I agree with you, and I actually don't really like the term mental toughness because it's so misleading and misunderstood because um, a lot of times it doesn't really have to do with like being super tough. It's, it's being able to just manage things. Um, and so I, I think it's possible that you could be born, you're born with some amount of ability to um some amount of resolve right like women are more mentally tough than men yeah exactly naturally women are exactly. naturally more <laughs> mentally tough than men and that's all i have to say now um but i think that no matter what level you have if it's not practiced throughout your life if you don't get opportunities to become more resilient or more mentally tough then it's not going to go anywhere and so i think that the um the nurture component of it is far more important, regardless of how much resiliency you're born with. Mm -hmm. It's so true though, right? Because I think we oftentimes think of babies as these like fragile little beings. But if you look at like, like Banner's just, he's a, a little over a year old now and he falls and he fails at everything he tries the first time he tries it. And there's never this like, we see it more with Knox now because he's older and he's watched too many shows on TV of like characters doing stuff like this. But uh, you never see Banner being like, I can't do this. I'm not good enough. I'm too, this is too hard. You'd never see a, a baby saying or thinking those types of things. But even Knox at four years old has already like picked up on some of that. So there's definitely a, a big element of it being learned one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think? 
Yeah, obviously, I think you're definitely born with it as a, as a baby because if you step back and you watch them, the development, you know, they just keep going and going and going, and they don't ask you to feel bad for them, you know. Um, and then it is a skill that you have to continue to develop as you've got you get older. I look back at my um, years in high school and you know high school wrestling. I was still I didn't really know how to be resilient i would always let my emotions get the best of me and i don't think i had the best person to guide you know i think it's very important to as a role model as, as adults who have kind of figured out and understand that it's an ongoing process to help guide our youth in that right direction and realize like you know that's why i think that sports in high school and just growing up in general is a great way to train that so like meant and continue to do that from from our from my experience you know i think and then as i've gotten older i think you know jumping into um competition in crossfit was really good for me because you know it's uh it helps you and every workout till this day just helps you work and fine tune that by drowning out that inner voice so and i think that's what just ultimately leads to really good um you know confidence and just to how to approach your day-to-day -day with that resilience, not only in physical, but also in mental stuff that goes on in your day-to-day. -day. Do you think, Alex, that um, some people are born with it more than others? Like, I think we've established that, like, babies in general are pretty resilient. Mm -hmm. But do you think that there's, like, some sort of, like, genetic component to it at all? I feel like there is. I feel like there has to be. Maybe. I don't know. There's probably a study somewhere if you Google yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there are propensities. I'm surprised Jeb doesn't already know about I it. I know. He's slacking, Jeb. Sorry. Um, but no, I mean, regardless, I think, of wherever you start, like Jeb was saying, it's 100% for me, it's a practiced skill uh, that requires ongoing, if not daily, weekly, monthly assessment and edification. Ooh, that was a nice word. So, yeah, I mean, and, and Julian kind of started out by talking about um, his high school sports. And I think that that's a really common one that people can, whether it's junior high, high school, college, whatever level that you played sports in. Um, I think that that's a common one that people can see how that was developed. And in some people, depending on that, your, your coach that you, did you just spill on yourself again? <laughs> just be resilient and just wipe it off. Just wipe it off and keep going. Um, depending on the coach that you had, you might have had to, you might have built a lot more character than others. Um, so, and that's, you know, a hot topic with parents these days is that everybody gets a trophy and that kind of thing. Let's talk about other experiences that we've had. And this can be like childhood or it can be more recent. It could be, you know, having a kid and learn, like learning mental toughness that way. Cause that's definitely a different way of strengthening that whole thing. But, um, what are some ways that you developed or that you feel like you've developed mental toughness? Because I think a lot of our members probably look at us and they're like, oh, my gosh, I, I know I see comments a lot on my social media of like, oh, my God, how are you still working out when you're so tired? Or like, how are you like sticking to the nutrition? Like, it's so why is it so much harder for me than it is for you? Um, so what are some ways that you guys have maybe developed the skill before now? So we'll start with Jeb. So, um, I don't want to weird anybody out here, oh but boy. the first thing that comes to mind, <laughs> if I'm being perfectly honest, is sobriety. Um, you know, so I've been, I'm going on like 14 years of sobriety. And prior to that, I went back and forth, right? Struggled, obviously, really hard. And there was periods where I could be sober for a few months, six months, maybe seven months. And so like that is resiliency. Like I was able to cut out the thing that I thought was the problem, but I was completely unhappy. I was really failing in a lot of um, personal relationships. Like my life had no quality to it. And then when I finally got sober for the time that it stuck, that it stuck, like I was given a set of tools and I was given a set of tools that I could implement and, and it worked for me. So I was given a strategy and a, a way of approaching life and a way of looking at problems and adversity as like a gift 
and as a, a challenge to be embraced. And so I feel like that to me is a big example of kind of the difference between resiliency and mental toughness. Because on the one hand, it's like, yeah, I could, I could force something and just do the thing that I said I was going to do and just try to like, and that's what I think a lot of people think mental toughness is, is like, I'm just going to keep- Try harder. Try harder yeah. and just bang this like um, square peg into a round hole and just keep banging and banging and banging and eventually it's probably going to work and I don't care how miserable I am in the process. Or it's like, just accept what's happening and be willing to try some different things and then it actually becomes easy. And I feel like- Having mental toughness is almost, to me, things, when you have that, everything else becomes easier. It's not like you're able to push harder. It's just everything else gets easier. Um, and so for me, like uh, being able to look at a problem and identify actually what the problem is, accept the parts of that that, that I have control over, and then just look at the very first little thing in front of me and do that thing. And then do that thing again and just keep doing that thing. And then then look at the next thing, right? And so um, I've been able to apply that to pretty much every other area of my life. So like when I opened a gym, I was able to use those tools to help build the gym and make that successful. And when I'm in little workouts, you know, it's like I'm able to use those tools and be successful. Um, so I think a lot of that kind of comes back to just that experience for me. That was where I really, I think, uh, got to feel a true example of resiliency and mental toughness. 100%, because I think what swallows people where they're like, this is too much, I can't do this, like, there's no way, is when they look at the whole picture, like, if you on day whatever of sobriety would have been like, wait, I have to do this my whole life, instead of being like, no, I just have to do it again tomorrow. Like, just today, I have to do it today, and then I have to do it tomorrow, instead of, like, forever, like, that's too much, like, I'm never going to make it, and it can be the same in a 10-minute workout, like, wait, I have nine more minutes, it's like, no, you have 30 more seconds, and then you have 30 more seconds again, and um, it, it it's the exact same principles, but having a strategy, I think, is huge, because a lot of times people do, it's just like, well, I just need to try harder, I'm just not trying hard enough, and oftentimes, that's not true it's like okay when this happens how am i going to deal with it planning that and thinking about it before you're in the situation i think can go a really long way um as opposed to just trying harder what's uh what's your example from your life i mean we were talking about this right before this live um for me i think it was um acting moving to la to become an actor and then going to auditions and hearing so many no's right because part of the excitement of going out there is like oh my goodness everyone thinks they can be a star and then they go out and then they you know they get praised from their manager their agent they're like i can get you all this i can send you out on auditions but then you realize that you are the one that has to put in the work and then there's still other elements working against you it's not just well, there's so many good actors same as uh, coaches there's so many good coaches out in the in the world that we just don't know of you know but for me it's just hearing all those no's every time i heard no or i thought i did good or you get callbacks and you go meet producers and you go you know you're signing contracts but only if you book the job and then you don't get them and you're th those moments there's so many times i remember moments of me sitting in the car and just asking myself why are you doing this what are you going to do different how are you going to overcome this moment because this is you know you realize every single experience either will just kind of break you down or you find attitude which again i think is the mental toughness into finding like what you learn from that experience and what can you do differently for your next one and what i have found is there's like one lady that I met in an audition one time because I looked at her resume and I this was when I was like 18 and it was just packed and she was like in these Spider-Man films. She just, she was a successful actress, but she never had like major roles, but it was enough to make a living because there's a lot of those actors and actresses out there as well. And I was like, wow, like how long did I take you to do this? She's like 10 years. And in that moment, I was like, that seems like forever. 
But she said, it took me 10 years, but once I got going, I, now I do this full time. And that always stuck with me because it's true. It's the resilient, it is the mentally tough individuals that have a, a way to continue moving forward that will always come out on top. If you look at all the successful individuals in the world and you look and you read books about them, because everybody's like looking for that secret ingredient. Well, that ingredient is resilience and mental toughness and attitude, right? You have to keep moving forward. It doesn't matter if it takes one year, two years, three years. Some people develop it quicker than others. But the longer you stay, stay at it and you're trying different ways, I guarantee you that it's just a matter of time before you find that break and then it just takes off. So that was my the acting for me was one that really just helped me a lot in life. I was going to use that same example because uh, I did a lot of uh, plays and musicals and then some like <laughs> random little TV stuff when I was young, though. I was like seven, eight, nine years old. Um, and I would go to auditions and I mean, you know, if you, if you don't get it that, I mean, sometimes it was just cause you didn't look the right way or whatever, but it was basically telling a seven year old, like, sorry, you, do, you didn't do a good job. Like, that's why this didn't happen for you. <clears throat> and I think that, <clears throat> sorry, hearing that is important. I think that hearing you didn't do a good enough job is a way to build that, like, awareness i guess and ability to take feedback i think one of the things in my life that has been so um critical for me is i am a very sensitive person i'm very emotional and i do take everything from your purse your instagram comments to the dms that i get to the way that you look at me in target i take everything personal but I have developed over the years an ability to continue moving, even if I'm super butt hurt by something, or even if, um, so So the acting was one thing when I was young. I also had a, a piano teacher that was very mean. Like I would cry my eyes out before my piano lesson every time. And my parents stuck with it. Like I had this piano teacher for a very long time. And at the time, like I can only imagine like as a mom, like just find a new piano teacher, but whatever they saw the value in it and I was getting better and I would once she was there I would listen and it was fine um I think experiences like that are really important and then when I was working for the CrossFit seminar staff this was probably the worst this was worse than the uh than the auditions was um we would be assigned to give a lecture and we would have to like talk about I don't know whatever deadlifts or whatever and you would sit down with the person in charge and you would have this like 30 to 45 minute conversation of all of the ways that you messed this thing up and how you could have done it better. And I remember I used to go to my hotel room and just cry because I had prepared so much and I had been so nervous, but I thought I did a good job. And then they basically just gave me a, all, this list of all the things I need to do better next time. Um, but somehow I had developed this ability to be like, all right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna fix it. And I, but it required me to, not bury the emotions like it's okay have them but then continue and show up and try to do better next time and those lessons have been invaluable to me and so i think part of um what we're going to talk about as as far as like tips go is the ability to not only be self-aware but take feedback from other people and actually listen to it and not get defensive and that's actually something that's really hard for me to do but it's a skill that i've developed so those are a couple and then just having four brothers helps too and then just hitting you with hockey sticks when you're a child um was <laughs> built some mental toughness yeah. what about you alex um i don't know so much about well recently and i post about this uh my husband and i josh have been going to this local park and playing basketball and basketball was one of the few sports that i did not play growing up because I was not good at it. And because things came generally naturally to me, I, it's like I, it was okay for me to just slough off on the thing. Like, I don't, I don't have to play basketball. I play all these other sports. Um, but it also kind of eliminated some opportunities for me to develop some mental toughness. And now that I'm older and I am a bit more mature and I can't just throw a tantrum when I don't make a layup, um, it's been really cool, I think, 
because what I'm working on is failing and not identifying with that failure. And I think, I mean, I think that's an essential part with any endeavor that we're striving toward is it's okay to mess up, almost expecting that you'll mess up because we're human and we do that. It's kind of our thing. Um, but not clinging to it so much that it keeps me from continuing to try. Um, and then having people around me who are really supportive and can help me like laugh at myself, which my husband does, um, is super helpful. And it's I, as silly as it is and as like trivial and like playful as that has been over the last couple months, I feel like it's taught me a lot. Um, and that's like mental toughness. and. I feel like my idea of resilience is what you guys think of as mental toughness and vice versa. Uh, because for me, resilience, the biggest example I have of that, and most people know, is that my dad broke his back when he was 15 years old and has been a paraplegic ever since. And, not, and I always get choked up when I talk about it, but he, that never stopped him. Like, I'm sure, you know, growing, like, after that, he probably struggled with it a lot, but then he decided this is not the story that I'm going to play out in my life. And then he had this awesome career despite barely graduating high school. He had a wonderful family who he provided for along with my mother. I mean, it's just anytime I start feeling sorry for myself, I have an, an amazing example of what it looks like to not play the victim, to take responsibility for your life, and to not only survive, but then flourish. Yeah. And I think sometimes, like, that's, like, such a perfect example of something, like, really big, an example that he, you got to see, like, firsthand and that he set for you. I think, Jeb, your example is another, like, really big one. And sometimes I think that people think that developing... <laughs> Uh, these skills requires some big life event like that to happen. And it's like, oh, well, you know, I've never had to overcome some major thing. So maybe that's like my problem. Um, but I think there's more mental toughness or resilience in the day to day. Um, and I think people lack more. I actually, um, I always joke around because I've had some pretty serious injuries. And for some reason, if, if I like get a paper cut, I'll cry about it. Like, it's like, oh my gosh, like I can't, I don't want to wash my hands. It's going to hurt so bad. But if I break my neck, I'm like, ah, oh, whatever, it's fine. Um, and I think people are like that. Like if a big life event happens, they somehow can switch their brain into crisis mode and I've got this and I'm going to do it. But when it's like simple day to day, like, oh, but it would just be so much easier to do this right mm -hmm. now. Um, mm -hmm. The mental toughness isn't quite there as much. So what are some ways without having some big life trauma happen What's like one tip that you would give people to be able to develop these skills? One tip. So one thing I like to always say is that there is no magic pill. If there was a magic pill, I would have found it, right? He's taken uh, all the pills. I've taken them all. <laughs> Trust me, it's not out there. But um, I agree with you. I mean, that's the hardest thing is to to just, it's it's what we always say. It's like getting up and doing the same thing over and over is way harder than some crazy over the top program. And so as far as it like an actionable tip, like one thing that really, really helps me is that I do the same thing every day to start my day, right? Like as soon as I wake up, I take a few minutes and I think about what my day is going to look like. What is the day in front of me? And so... <clears throat> I can't remember who said this, but it was some philosopher or somebody, right? But it was like um, experiencing the unknown and uncertainty is central to the human existence. Like that is what life is. It's literally having to manage and deal with the unknown and the uncertain things that are unexpected. So to think that we could ever get into such a routine that nothing new is ever going to come in there and disrupt it is ridiculous. So I'd like to take a few minutes and just tell myself, like, you know, today you're going to encounter some jerk. You know, you're going to encounter something that you don't want to do. You know that some things are going to happen that are unexpected. 
But that doesn't mean that I have to change anything as far as how I'm going to deal with it, as far as my attitude, as far as anything like that. And if I want to, you know, if I have some type of goal that I'm working on, that doesn't have to be affected by it. Um, so the long and short of it is if you can take a few minutes in the morning to just, um, you know, think about your day, think about the next 24 hours and, and how you're going to participate in that 24 hours, how you're going to show up for that 24 hours. It really goes a long way, um, in making that 24 hours really, really worthwhile. And the more you do that, the better it gets and the more impact that it has. So the first day that you do it, who knows, maybe some crazy thing will happen and it's like, oh, this didn't work. But if you do it for seven days, then talk to me and I, I guarantee you'll feel something. Nice. Jules, what's a tip? Something that like they could think about or try or a situation, whatever. Oh man. It could be like, it could be like it with the, in their workout. It could be like in their, I don't know, as they're going about their day, whatever. I don't have one right now. You have to come back to me. Okay. Um, another uh, example that I, I had written down some like phrases and one of the phrases that I wrote down was, um, put yourself in shitty situations on purpose. And one of the other things that I would say in my life helped build resilience, and this is a very um, uh, specific to the situation type of resilience, but I have travel resilience. Like, uh, again, I, I'm a very emotional person, but like if you put me in a really long line for TSA or something like that, it, it impacts me 0%. Only because I've had so many terrible travel experiences that I'm kind of numb to it at this point. And Julian's experienced this with me. I think we went to Mexico and we had to go through customs like twice and then through TSA. Like it was just a disaster. And he was like, I don't know how you did this for so long. Like it was getting to him and he's the most relaxed person ever. And I was just like, no, this is just, this is just it. And so, um, and obviously when I was traveling, I wasn't like, putting myself in those situations on purpose. Um, but you can do that. And yesterday, um, at the end of the workout on the tips, I was talking about, we did Raya, which is a workout with uh, double unders and squat cleans. I was talking about how I did not want to do that workout yesterday at all. There was 0% of me, like all the other workouts for the rest of the week looked more fun. And so because uh, these things are skills that have to be not only developed, but maintained, you can't just get to a level of mental toughness and you're like, cool, achieved it. I don't have to ever like practice this or work on this anymore. Um, as I've gotten away from competing and, and training hard in that way, I feel that I have to choose the, the hard things that I don't want to do and put myself in those situations on purpose or I will lose it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, because I, I don't want to do this so much, I have to do it. And, um, so putting yourself in those situations on purpose and whether that's choosing the version of the workout that you least want to do, or you're super comfortable on the bike and forcing yourself to do the rower or do the runner or run outside, working out outside when you're like, Oh, I hate working out outside the sun. It's like so hot or it's cold out there. Like choosing to put yourself in situations that you don't want to be in on purpose is, is a tip that I would give to help build some mental toughness and resilience. Force yourself to, to, to overcome. Would you include an ice bath in there? I've done ice baths. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things, you know, we've talked about like people that take these cold showers and um, 100%, like I'm the person that's like, no, 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 no. Like I have two little kids and I'm already not sleeping and the last thing I'm gonna do is take my freaking warm shower away from myself. Um, but yeah, stuff like that. If that just sounds awful to you, maybe don't do it forever. But there is benefit in in kind of, you know, pushing yourself to do those kinds of things. Um, and not ever in like a scary or dangerous or like unhealthy way. But um, noticing what you're fighting against so much. And the more you're fighting it, the more it probably means you should at least do it um, for a short period of time. Nice. That reminds me back when we owned our affiliates we had a little like saying or mantra and it was do hard stuff fast and it wasn't even it was kind of a play on words because we did mean like actually do it f quickly but we also meant like fast and before it's too late like 
choose to do the hard things now before it becomes what you have it's to do. It's literally as small as like, oh, I don't feel like like taking the trash out. Like, just do it right now. Or then. just like, like you should not just hitting the snooze button. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know. Um, so one thing, and hopefully this is a tip, because I do feel like it's an actionable step and it's something that I do and I had mentioned it being a daily practice. And one of the things I do every morning is um is journaling and i think people are like what do i journal about like oh i have a crush on so and so it's like that's not a reality for me anymore so usually what i do is i spend that time if there's some like conflict let's say or something that i'm struggling with um something maybe that like is messing with my emotional sobriety let's say it's an opportunity for me to work like literally brainstorm because and I work well with like pen to paper so maybe you can do this in some other media or or uh, fashion but writing out the situation that I'm currently dealing with what is the reality not what not how I'm perceiving it or anything like that but literally what are the facts what are the circumstances and then what are what is the part that I'm playing in it what what hand do I have in this and getting really clear on what that is then allows me and this is something I do with journaling as well is literally like setting up a game, game plan using the tools that I've developed over my you know what 28 years and figuring out okay well how am I going to move forward sometimes it's with action sometimes it's with changing my behavior um, but sometimes it's honestly just thinking about something differently like changing my perspective about it so that I can move forward, which is what we've agreed is resilience. Um, and it's not bouncing back to something that I was prior. It's, it's like an absorption of what I've, of what's happened and then like integrating it into my life and then moving forward, I mean, stronger, smarter, wiser um, than I was before, which is not bouncing back. I'm different now because I've taken what I've learned and now I'm using it to do better and be better. And I think like writing down the reality and like writing down what you have control over and that's been brought up several times now of like that awareness of what part am I playing in this or what what do I have control over? Because we don't always have control over all of it. Like when I'm in the line for security, like I don't have control over how fast it's moving. I have control over like, you know, maybe use that time to listen to a book or I don't know, like what can I do to right now to change the situation? Maybe it's nothing. Um, so if it's nothing, then you got to let it go. And I think what we see a lot of times, even like on our Facebook group or things like that is people focusing so hardcore on their problem that they, that they haven't gotten around yet to looking at any sort of solution. And the questions are usually formed of like, this is hard for me. This is hard for me. I don't like this. I don't like this. Instead of like, uh, these are the things that I can do. Can you guys help me figure out, or this is the time that I do have. Can you guys help me figure out uh, the best way to attack this? It's always what I can't do. What, what's too hard. What's not in my control is where people tend to focus. So I think that's like super, a uh, super good tip. Mm -hmm. Super good. Did you come up with one? Yeah. I mean, just, I agree with you on the, um, do more uncomfortable things more frequently, get out of your element. Um, one of the things that I, me personally, I've been wanting to overcome is my fear of snakes. Mm -hmm. And cause I have a, I don't like snakes Terrified. at all. I think really? there's a reason why Satan was a snake. <laughs> um, but anyway, I think that for me finding, and, and the reason I've thought of this before is because Anytime I go to like deserty areas or even like anything it. that's like dry, I always f feel like there's going to be like a gardener snake just popping out of me and I'm going to freak out and I'm going to run away and leave Knox or one of the boys to like deal with it. But the thing is, now that I'm a father, I'm like, I need to overcome this fear because I don't, you start to realize like your fears can then rub off on them as well. And that's not something that I want them to be scared of. So I've been meaning to like try to go to like, I don't know, PetSmart or somewhere and just- <laughs> do, we, do we need to make a vlog of this? No, no, no. And then just like grab a snake <laughs> yeah. and just hold it and, you know, just let it be and feel what I want to feel and realize that everything's okay. Because for some reason I have ing ingrained that every snake is venomous. 
Like every snake's gonna bite me and I'm gonna die. He used to live in Central Cali. Uh, I know. <laughs> I, I feel know, like there's I a know. lot of snakes over there. Um, Can we yeah, get like an office snake? Um, I'll get a pet snake maybe, or not. Maybe, you know, hey, there's a reason why Batman created his bat cave and, you know, made his symbol the bat. He hated them. Oh, that's right. And oh, he, yeah. he, so he, you're the snake. Yeah. So then now I was like, you know what? I could learn a thing or two from Batman. So anyway, yes. I, yeah. I want to do that. That's like a personal thing. Just like really zoning in on one specific item as opposed to like a general. But that's for me. You know, I know, you know, Miranda, you, you don't like sna or spiders. Um, I'm not super terrified of spiders. I just don't like uh, how fast they move, but I'm not sure. like super terrified of them. Like the smaller ones, I'm a fan of snakes. I'll capture a snake and yeah. put it on you. And see, that's the thing. Like I feel like I just need to overcome that, and that's the best way to become resilient is to face the fear, face that by you know finding you know good intro ways to do that. And I think that's the best way to do it. And I'm gonna go to like a pet smart. I think that might sound like a silly example to some people, but it's just like like we're saying, like it doesn't always have to be some huge thing. I think uh, when we're younger, we're more we tend to try new things and things that scare us a little bit more and as we get older it's so much easier for us to be like oh no like i'm i'm good like i'm not gonna go um i've i've seen people do that with like trying new foods or even like traveling to places that sound a little bit like sketchy um or you know going and trying this like i don't know hang gliding whatever like when we're younger we tend to be like sure whatever i'll do it and then as we get older for some reason i feel like we get more scared or we protect ourselves more and things like that but even just recognizing that you're like uncomfortable around snakes and you're in your 30s like go do something about it you don't have to you know you don't have to just be like nope that's not me i'm scared of snakes and live like that forever yeah, and you know what was another good one was uh ocean swimming oh if my gosh ocean yes swim, yes that built oh some resilience for me my goodness the amount nope. of i would say that for me in the last past five years was something that Same like was just so um, empowering because every time we'd have to practice ocean swimming in Huntington Beach and the lifeguards are out there telling you, oh yeah, there's like five baby sharks. Don't worry about it. They're like, and they're like, well, how big is a baby shark? Like seven feet. What? They're like, oh yeah, their mouths are only like this big, you know, but to him, he was comfortable. But like, you know, you're, one, I have a hard time swimming in the ocean. Um, or just there's just so many un there's so much unknown. It's not like you can open your eyes in the water and you, you if you ever swallow ocean water, it's the mm -hmm. worst feeling ever. Mm -hmm. Um that and to then me you just was, feel like you're like halfway dead already. Mm -hmm. You literally have to find a way to just be at peace and realize you have to come to acceptance like I'm going to get bitten by a shark and it, this is it. Like I'm the whole time and just be okay with it. You just have a lot of fear of animals. Um, no, no, I, no. <laughs> I agree with you on the swimming thing, though, actually. And one of the we like we like made these little like uh, mantra posters when I was a few days before I gave birth to Banner. And because of that, what, my poster that I made said every wave brings me closer to shore because that was burned in my brain as one of the like scariest, hardest things I've ever done. And but you can't fight it like as soon as you start fighting it. Oh. And one of the things that has helped me be more resilient in life is um, and I think Alex, you're probably the same way because I know you're a very perfectionist type person. Is that um, that ability to be able to relax when you just are not in control? Mm. Um, and labor taught me that, but also swimming in the ocean taught it, taught it to me first. Um, it's really, I mean, some of the people that live in like Hawaii and Australia right now are just laughing at us <laughs> uh, because they just love it and they do it from the time they're little kids. Um, so, I have yeah. like one more or I guess Another two tip? more. Yeah, okay. things, especially since we have to consider our audience, I think. But if you're doing the sh street parking daily or shift workouts, I think you have an opportunity any time to pick maybe one movement. Like for me, it's always I, I tend to go towards like trying to do something unbroken because a lot of times I have to choose to be really uncomfortable to commit to that goal and it's like it's just getting reps in like i feel like every time you work out you have an opportunity to practice being a little bit tougher mentally um and then i was i was just thinking like how can we do this with nutrition i feel like that's an easy one though like there are vegetables that i eat pretty regularly that i don't love that i like tolerate at best 
but it's important to me knowing the nutritional value of these vegetables or whatever food it might be that I freaking just suck it up and eat the vegetables. Like Which veggies? Uh, Brussels sprouts in particular. Really? She's gotta, she's gotta dice them up smaller. Let me, yeah. Let me also, I'm lazy. Stuff real quick. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me make them enjoyable. He's yeah, sure and like you have in your control with the Brussels sprouts. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm also a believer in like sh your food should taste good. It's not. I'm not saying that you should like suffer through it, but at the same time, I, I think mental toughness is the choice of doing something because it's good for you, not because it's not because it tastes good, like plain water not the best tasting of course delicious soda is no, great water is amazing no, water you drink. no it is <laughs> also that i'm just saying no i totally get it like, like we're exposed to that cap, stuff that's that way more tasty and we choose not to drink those things we choose to drink water because it's good for us um i think it's in atomic habits but i could be wrong but you've read it too so tell me if i'm if you remember this as well, but he does talk about like things that bring you instant pleasure mm -hmm. are typically have long-term negative results mm -hmm. and things that are like in the moment more difficult, like eating the Brussels sprouts or drinking the water over the soda have those long-term benefits. And it's really hard, especially like this day and age, it's so easy for everything, whether it's food or, or just physical comfort or anything to just choose the more comfortable option um, and that is why, like back in the day when, when we were all like farmers and cavemen or whatever, like there was no one t giving talks about like, Hey, choose something that's going to be hard for you today to like stay mentally sharp. Like they just, they had to, like, that was their life. They didn't need to practice it as much back yeah. then as we do now. Um, but just like, just like the physical act of fitness, there's like a mental component of fitness. That's so, so huge. But the long-term um, benefits from it are so big. And actually, when you were talking about sharks and the ocean, do you remember um, when we were dating and I went and swam with the sharks in the ocean? Oh, yeah, that was a big thing for you. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I actually was afraid of swimming in the ocean. And I'm not as afraid of sharks as, as some people, but they were like these little nerf sharks. But because I had put myself in a situation where I knew I was capable of swimming in the ocean, and because I had an attitude of how can you say no to this opportunity? Like, this is like a really cool thing. I was mentally in a place that allowed me to go do something that was really, really cool. The guy that I went with, Josh, he didn't want to do it either. Like both of us, as we were like riding the boat out there, we're like, what are we doing? We're going to die. Like, this is terrible. But what an opportunity. And so many opportunities come up for you um, when you're in the right place mentally and you're like, F it, let's go, let's do it, I wanna do it. And you have so many cooler experiences in life and things open up to you so much more, whether it's a new job, a new relationship, a move to somewhere that you never thought you could move that far away or something like that. Um, but th it is definitely a mental space. My other thing that I wrote down that I wanted to make sure and hit, because I think this is a really important one and something we've been talking a lot about lately, is watching who you surround yourself with. Um, and as a child, you don't have a lot of um, say when it comes to this. And I think this is where some people develop much more mentally tough than other people from childhood, um, where when you do fail or when you do uh, struggle or something like that, are the people around you saying, you know what? Yeah, you totally blew it. But I believe that you can do it and, and you're going to get it. Or are the people around you saying, this isn't fair, that wasn't your fault, don't, don't, you shouldn't try so hard, like you're doing the best you can, like who, what are the people around you saying? And pay attention to that because again, it's more comfortable to hang out with people that are like, that wasn't your fault, you shouldn't feel bad, you shouldn't try so hard, like just, I mean, and it's not that you shouldn't love yourself the way you are because we all should for sure. But there is a level of that that can be um, detrimental in your ability to uh, maintain mental toughness or gain it and be resilient. I know it's something we've been talking a lot about lately. Yeah, your circle is extremely important. I mean, I know, I, you know, people always say, oh, I'm a fitness, watch out who ain't fitness bowling. But, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, I, I feel... Um, what I look forward to is when the individual then realizes after they complete a workout what they just accomplished because it's you didn't do it for me you did it for yourself and look at what you've gained because of that. Um, Julian be believes in you. 
I we do. wouldn't ask you to do it. <laughs> I, 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 absolutely. I really, really do. And, you know, vice versa. I like those kinds of challenges. I have found a, a way to do that for myself. So I don't really I become so dependent on it. Um, but it does help when other people that have the same mentality are around me because, you know, you don't allow the slippage to happen. And then you, you're like, oh, OK, maybe I won't do this. Try so hard today because everybody around me. No, 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 no. You know, one of the things that we've also discussed is that as we get older, you know, it's important to maintain resilience um, and men keep that mental toughness because don't be the average um, individual. Don't be the average human who just declines as they get older. Be as resilient as tough as long as possible and set a new norm um, because as we get older, you can see you, there's like uh, you tend to become more relaxed and more comfortable in your surroundings. You're like, ah, I don't want to go as hard. And because I, I can acknowledge that now, I do like my surroundings of people saying like, oh, I'm going to put to push me to go, you know, a little bit You're harder. You're one of the older guys in the gym now. Yeah, it's, you know, I'm at that, <laughs> I'm at that place and I and I really enjoy that, you know, and uh, but yeah, your circle is extremely important. It doesn't just apply to fitness. It applies to everything, everything, right? That that it's it's that it's an attitude thing that, you know, you have to look for in individuals. And once you know what that is and how it feels, you'll know how to spot that easily in a crowd. And I think it's not just how they talk to you, but it's how you see how they deal with problems in their own life too. Again, it could be like people at work. It could be, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be fitness, but like surrounding yourself with other people who are like, oh man, like that didn't go the way I thought it was going to be, you know, but this is how I think I could have done it different or, you know, or j even just whatever and showing up the next day and not letting it um, slow them down or deter them, I think is something huge that you can pay attention to. I also had written down because more than nothing is such a big thing in the street parking community. And sometimes that attitude shows mental toughness and sometimes more than nothing is a cop out. And I did a podcast about this a little while ago, maybe a year ago or so mm -hmm. where, um, when you have just had a day and you're just like, I don't want feel like doing this at all. I don't want to work out more than nothing shows mental toughness for sure. I'm going to go out. I'm not going to start my clock. I'm going to do it. But when you aren't, when you're totally fine and there's no reason for you not to be able to go push hard mm -hmm. being like, Oh, whatever, more than nothing. Right guys. Like, yay. No, 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 no. That's not the intent of more than nothing. And I think that's a, it's a phrase that I've, I haven't seen it used that way a lot, but I have seen it used that way a few times where you do have to be careful of consistency in being too comfortable. Um, and just, and just using stuff like that to, uh, slap on there and 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 not refine how hard you go and and it's not i don't think at least me personally i mean julian goes a little bit harder in the workouts than i do uh, more consistently but it's not an everyday thing it's just choosing sometimes where it's like i really don't want to do this so i probably should and i'm gonna give it 100 mm percent -hmm. yeah i think it comes down to like like alex had posted on your um your dexa post mm -hmm. right she's really good with the captions but you'd said something about how, um, you know, your, your sometimes foods had turned into like your a lot of the time foods and that you, you pretty much are what you consistently do. So it's, it's about what you're consistently doing, right? So if you're consistently doing less than what you're capable of and saying, oh, I did more than nothing, then yeah, we kind of know where that's going to lead, probably not to where you want to go. But if once in a while you're not feeling it and you just just do something just to check the box, mm -hmm. then that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like even with the people, you know, when I think about like it's like what you consume, right? And you consume the attention of the people around you and you consume um, information with what you allow your eyes to to behold right with it whether it's like looking at the news and watching people fight and yell at each other all day like that's not going to put you in a good mental place and blame and, each other for everything and blame each other for <laughs> everything you know and if you're surrounding yourself with people that are like not going to be honest with you um one way or the other i mean it should go without saying but one of the kind of the third category we didn't really talk about was like people that subtly keep you down people that subtly want to put you beneath them and that's very, very toxic and nobody needs that. And I think sometimes we get a belief system that like, oh, this person's up here and it's okay if they kind of like tell me that I'm less than, 
or not as capable as um as maybe I, I really am. And I think we're all capable of a lot more than we think. And so, um, you know, it's like you're consuming, what foods are you consuming? What liquids are you consuming? What people are you consuming? I think it's all comes down to what is consistently going in and that's really gonna affect what comes back out. Yeah, and I feel like we're, I mean, with social media, we can be handed our excuses, I think. Like the world just wants to give away excuses because it excuses you them. You can find anyone that will agree with yeah. you with about so anything. anything. Yeah. <laughs> but on the flip side of that, you can also find people who are like that, who are going to lift you up, mm -hmm. n not coddle you, but show you what I think is true love and help you move forward and move through something. And I also wanted to say, if you don't find yourself in a situation where you are surrounded by those people, I don't think you need to wait to start creating that in your life. I think you can be that for other people. And I, I feel like when you flip that switch, you learn really quickly who those people are and who those people aren't. And then you maybe even start to attract those people into your life. Contagious. Yeah, it's contagious, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and it's such, a, it's such a fine line of like listening to someone hearing them and validating their feelings, but then walking them and guiding them, maybe holding their hand to the solution in a loving and, and tolerant way versus judging, shaming, that kind of stuff. Um, but it, that's another thing that's practice. And it's you have to start where you are and move forward from there and just know that you're gonna mess up, but doesn't mean you're not gonna get better, so. All right. Right. I mean, we. Th I love this episode. There. I mean, there are so, so many. Great. Yeah. There's so many things to talk about. We can um, keep going. Yeah. And um, but let's go ahead and wrap this up for this week. Um, we'll check in with you guys in a couple weeks. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with anybody that you feel would benefit from watching this. Check in with you guys soon. Take care.